today we'll be talking about the top preventive maintenance tasks for HVAC systems. I'm Rebecca Ellis, and although these aren't the only things you need to do to maintain an HVAC system, I believe they're the most important for keeping your equipment working well. Filter replacement is one of the most commonly understood preventive maintenance activities for HVAC systems. However, it's also one of the most commonly neglected, especially in systems that are out of sight or difficult to access. In large central air handlers such as this one, it's important to check the filters weekly to evaluate how dirt is building up in them. Filter loading in air handling units that introduce outside air will vary with the seasons. In the spring and the fall, when the units are introducing a lot of outside air for free cooling, you can expect the filters to get dirtier faster. In the summer, when you're running at minimum outside air, you'll have less dirt buildup most of the time, but you need to be aware of your local tree conditions because there may be a few weeks every summer when you might have extra pollen or cottonwood in the air that will get sucked up and plug your filters. In the winter time, it's also important to check them on a regular basis to make sure they're not being clogged by snow that's drawn in with the outside air. Needless to say, air handling units that introduce 100% outside air all the time are going to build up dirt fastest in their filters. It's not unheard of in urban areas to have to change these filters every month. Each unique filter bank, building, and site will have different filter change frequencies. Only real life experience can teach you what those frequencies need to be. So at a minimum, you want to keep a record of how frequently you change your filters. Here's an example for this air handler. Every time the filter banks is changed, it's recorded with a date. I believe that you should only change filters when they're dirty and they need to be changed, not according to some predetermined calendar schedule. Now, if you properly care for your filters, your downstream coils will be in good shape. Even so, every few years, you're going to want to do a deep clean of those coils to get into all the cracks and crevices. Coil cleaning is critical for ensuring energy efficiency and maintaining the heating and cooling capacities your building needs. Outdoor condensing units also need to have their coils cleaned on a regular basis. This is a mini split heat pump condensing unit on a roof. These types of coils are susceptible to leaves, pine needles, cottonwood, balloons, all depending on where they're located. And in most cases, outdoor condenser coils require more frequent cleaning than indoor coils that are protected by filters. This is a small condensing unit. The same applies to large condensing units, many of which are integral to rooftop air handling equipment. If you'd like more information on exactly how to clean a coil, there are videos covering that in the Maximize Your Facilities portfolio. Proper water treatment is often overlooked and neglected in closed loop HVAC hydronic systems such as chilled water and heating hot water. Lack of proper treatment can lead to corrosion, premature pump seal failures, scale buildup, loss of efficiency, and even water loss from your system. If you are not chemically treating or monitoring your water quality, I recommend that you contract with a professional who will assess your systems and recommend a chemical treatment regimen and a monitoring frequency. Some closed loop systems have side stream filters, such as this one. It continuously removes particles from the water and collects them in a cartridge, which is inside the housing. The filter cartridge needs to be replaced periodically. The frequency of those filter replacements depends on your water quality. So this is a 100% outside air handling unit in Minnesota. Given our seemingly endless frigid winters, it's very important for its cooling coil and its heating coil to be protected from freezing in the winter time. Because of that, both of these piping systems have a glycol solution to prevent freezing. Every glycol piping loop has an intended glycol concentration. And the higher percentage of glycol, the better the freeze protection. 
If you have a glycol system, you will need to monitor and maintain its concentration at its intended level. Your service contractor can take a sample of the fluid from the loop, measure it, and let you know if you need to add any glycol so you're ready for the next heating season. Even with closed loop hydronic systems with the best water treatment, you can have problems with isolation valves working when you need them to. For example, this is an isolation valve on a hot water pump that's intended to be open all the time unless the pump needs to be down for service. So if this valve has been sitting open for months and maybe even years without being exercised, it couldn't seize up and when you do need to close it to maintain the pump, it's not gonna operate. I recommend that you exercise these valves on a periodic basis closed, open, closed, open, maybe three or four times to make sure that you have the full stroke available to you and that you could shake off any scale or debris that might be building up on the internal valve components. In that way, you'll have a lot more confidence that when you need to isolate the equipment for service, the valve will actually function. You'll also find balancing valves throughout most HVAC hydronic systems. They also should be exercised periodically because they are susceptible to clogging. They have very small orifices, very small moving parts, and if anything gets clogged, you're, they're gonna stop flow or reduce flow. Reduced flow through these balancing valves will result in poor temperature control at best and damaged equipment at worst. So exercising balancing valves is a little trickier than the manual isolation valves in that you need to make sure that you know what position they were in when you start closing them. And here, this one has a scale that says 11.7. So I know that's where I need to put it back. So I close it down, close it fully, and then open it up again, close it, you know, do it a few times, and then put it back to where you found it, which is 11.7 and that's all there is to it. Strainers are key components of every HVAC piping system. They're intended to remove debris from the water before passing that water through sensitive equipment such as pumps, control valves, and other devices that are susceptible to damage. This is a strainer in a hot water system. It's insulated and upstream of this pump, protecting the pump from potential damage. Water comes into the strainer and internally, the strainer diverts any debris into the strainer leg, allowing only clean water to pass through to the pump. Over time, debris will collect in the strainer leg and therefore it needs to be blown down on a periodic basis to remove the debris. It's easy to do. All you need to do is connect a hose to the drain connection, open the isolation valve, and let the water in the system push through the leg removing all the debris through the hose until it runs clear, then close the isolation valve, remove the hose, and you're back in business. Cooling towers expel the building's heat to the atmosphere. As such, they are actually heat exchangers. Keeping cooling towers clean, however, is far more challenging than any indoor HVAC equipment. This is where the condenser water enters the top of the cooling tower. It comes out of this pipe and fills up this pan. And at the bottom of the pan are a number of discharge pipes that evenly distribute the water across the cooling tower all the way down. In the springtime especially, but any time, this pipe could be discharging debris into this pan and it's very important to keep the pan clean because any big chunks of debris could sit in and clog one of these openings. And every clogged opening is going to decrease the efficiency and cooling capacity of your cooling tower. Here's an example of some debris that's in here today. With a few of these, you could potentially clog some of these outlet pipes. As water flows down the tower and over the fill, some of the water evaporates, leaving behind minerals that may have been in the water. The minerals tend to collect and scale up the fill, especially down here at the bottom. Periodic cleaning of the fill is needed to ensure the water doesn't channelize through paths of least resistance. Unless you have evenly distributed flow through all parts of the fill, the cooling tower capacity and efficiency will decrease. As you can see here, this tower has very even flow across the entire width of the fill. 
At the bottom of the cooling tower is a basin into which the water leaving the fill collects. Debris and sediment will flow into this basin with the water. The basin needs to be inspected regularly to ensure no sediment is clogging the basin drain. It also needs to be thoroughly cleaned at least annually. Otherwise, sediment will find its way back to the pump and chiller, degrading their performance and potentially causing damage. This chiller has not actually been started up for the season because it's waiting for its annual cleaning. That's why there's so much debris in the bottom. Thanks for watching the top preventive maintenance tasks for HVAC systems.